Hi, uh, my name is Greg. And I'm John. And we are with the Real Rejects. Hi, guys. Hi, Zach. Um, this is truly an honor. Uh, oh. I grew up on, um, I watched all the Scrubs, watched Garden State a bunch. Thanks, man. Chicken Little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're so, just going to read your IMDb. Just going to read your IMDb. Yeah, <laughs> going down the list. <laughs> so we're gonna the do last kiss. Yeah. Going in style. <laughs> yeah, we're doing this, man. Um, yeah, and uh, I was, we were telling Gail this. Like, we're we're obviously not the typical target demographic for this movie, but then we found ourselves. We were, like, really hesitant to watch it, and then we found ourselves both really charmed by it and found it really sweet and funny. So It is. It's heartwarming, and, you know, I, I think it's cool that Disney's putting it out. It's such, it's, it's such a... You know, it doesn't shy away from what it's like to be a blended family in 2022 and all the different things that can come up. And yeah. I mean, I mean, it's amazing how much Kenya packs into the, the screenplay and the kids are hilarious. And, you know, mostly for parents, it's just it's the ultimate example of something like you are you're going to laugh. You're not going to sit there and roll your eyes at, oh, my goodness, I have to watch this with my kid. You're going to laugh your butt off, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I was wondering, like, I, I feel like a role like yours in a film like this, it could easily feel perfunctory. But between the writing and your performance, I thought you struck a great balance of fun and relatability while also supporting the ensemble. So how did you, you go about building a uh, uniquely blended family dynamic with Gabrielle and the rest of your co-stars? Well, Gab group? and I quick right off the bat. She's just cool and she's fun and she's, you know, she's just, you, you can't say anything that'll shock her. In fact, she'll say something that'll shock you. And, the, and I love kids. I don't have any of my own, but I was like, you know, Uncle Zach and she really <laughs> has kids. So she was more like the mom. She, she's the one who had to be like, Zach, you're getting them all riled up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But, um, you know, we, we just, we had a great balance. We, it was the pandemic. We were so thrilled to be able to make something, you know, uh, as performers, as someone who attempts to make people laugh, to finally be on a set again and, and doing that with little kids and they were so cute. And what's great about kids is you can give them a joke that comes to your mind and, and sound like an insult as you would never go to a fellow actor like, Say this, say that, say this, <laughs> say this line I just came up with back to me. But with a little kid, you can be like, say this, and then I'm going to say this. And they would do it, and it would be hilarious. And you'd get all this, like, there's a moment when the kid, I'm like, how did you get down here? And he goes, the laundry chute. I go, we have a laundry chute? Like, we, <laughs> me and that kid just improv that together. Well, improv oh, it together. No, I, no, told him, I told him to say he took the laundry chute. You know? <laughs> I was going to say, then with you being a director yourself, did you ever find that you wanted to slip into that role? Or... I was very careful. My nightmare is whenever I'm an actor that, that a director will feel like I'm going to step on their toes at all. So, so Gail and I had a great uh, synergy. Occasionally, I would whisper in her ear, like, you should have so-and-so do that. It'd be hilarious. Or, or there's a really cool camera position over here for that joke. And, you know, but but never, never overstep my, 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 my bounds with it. Yeah, that's fun. You know, you, you actually had he had a question in mind that I thought was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so your character, obviously, is a chef and a sauce connoisseur. So I am curious. Do you have a sauce recipe of your own or just a favorite sauce? And when will we expect to see you on Hot Ones? Um, I don't think I could handle Hot Ones. I, you know, I've been getting a lot of requests to go on Hot Ones and I look at it, it looks so painful. Um, That's the point. I uh, know. <laughs> we want to watch you, want to watch you suffer, Zach. Yeah. I know. Zach, when can we see you suffer? Yeah. <laughs> Um, sauce wise, I'm not really, you know, I'm, I'm a big sweet guy. I have a sweet tooth. So, and I love peanut butter and chocolate. So it's probably already invented Reese's peanut butter cup sauce, but that's what I would do. I would just drench uh, like a Sunday with peanut butter and chocolate sauce. My, my last question is, is like with, with the kids that you were working with in particular, I know like a common trait is like, ah, you know, you don't have a favorite here, but was there a kid here in particular that you felt like we really clicked the most? Yeah, Leo, he played, he played uh, uh, Luca. He just, he's just the sweetest kid I've ever met in my life. And he's an incredible dancer and he's so smart and he... He's the kind of kid we would sit and just have like a very grown up chat about things. And then, mm. and then they'd call us to our marks and we'd go over and he goes, that was a nice chat, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I mean, he's, he's like nine going on 40. I just, You're going to have like a I, monthly call set. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, we do. We hung out, you know, he, he's got a, um, you know, he, he had never been to Disneyland. So I took him and his mom at Disneyland oh, cool. Uh, cool. with my friends. And uh, I just love him. He's the sweetest kid I ever met. 
uh, yeah, this uh, this awesome. movie was fun, and uh, even though you're not a dad yourself, you sure as hell play a, a great one. You're know, like, thank man, you, it seems like I'd be a hell of a dad. I would so, be happy to be your son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and thank you. You guys, you guys should check out uh, our, our me and Donald's podcast, uh, Fake Doctors, Real Friends, where we we, we uh, watch old yeah. Scrubs episodes. Yes. And... I've heard all about that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I grew absolutely. up down the street from the hospital, so <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna binge yeah. all of those tonight. <laughs> oh, check, check it out. You'll love it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Zach, for your time, and thank uh, congrats you on the movie. This was thank a blast. You. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Greg. Hey. I'm John, and we are the Real Rejects. Uh, Gail, <laughs> Gail, thank you uh, for taking the time to speak with us. Um, I think I can speak for both of us on this end. Uh, we'll be honest. When we were walking into this, we were like, I don't know about this. <laughs> and I then, get then, it. Then, then it was done. <laughs> we are not the target audience. <laughs> we're not target audience. Yeah. I don't know. Then, by the time it was done, I was like. That was a really sweet movie. Uh, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. uh, my heart is touch right now. Mm -hmm. um, so great That's job. <laughs> thank, thank you yeah. for uh, it's sort of why I laughed when I first saw you guys. I was like, oh boy, either they <laughs> it or I am in for a roasting. So thank you. So glad. Will there be more action in the second? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, no, I mean, like one of the main things I really loved about this movie was. I would say the level of support that was demonstrated throughout the film. Mm -hmm. Like even at times where one would expect a like generic conflict to come up, it would sort of divert it. It was refreshing to like flip the script on showing love in a tough situation yeah. uh, instead of a generic conflict. So it did make me curious uh, with the amount of heart in this movie, what were some of the main messages you intentionally wanted to convey to the audience or wanted them to take away? Well, the biggest one is I think it's really tempting to think that we need to have more and give our families more, mm -hmm. like more money, a bigger house, more sneakers, you know, just more success. And I think that really what the movie comes down to saying is kids want more time. They want more attention. They want more you. And we didn't set out to make like a Cats in the Cradle movie where everyone's crying and saying, I wish I were a better parent. But just that at the end <laughs> of the movie, you want to spend more time with your kids is really our goal. And then one thing that was really important to me, and I think it gets slept on a little bit because we do a lot of really interesting social commentary. Mm -hmm. I love the scene with the two dads talking about the true limitations of a white dad trying to parent a black son that no matter how aware you are, no matter how much love and focus you give it, no matter how educated you are about it, you just lack that lived experience. So like, that's a wonderful scene. I have feel like a lot of people will talk about that scene, but a scene that I just adore is the character of Dom. You know, he has these natural, natural connections to his daughter, who's this amazing athlete and his son, who's like a comic book nerd. He just doesn't really know what to do about him. And partially because he's just on the road and not around. And also because he can't relate to D and D and comic books that they've just sort of kept their distance. But the actor, Andre, who plays DJ was so vulnerable and Tree, who plays Dom, is so warm. Originally, their reconciliation scene was much shorter. And I was like, these guys need more. You know, when we expanded the scene and made it bigger and I'm like, oh, you are really going out on a limb. We're going to go to Comic-Con. That is as far out of your comfort zone as imaginable. And I just love that scene so much. I think that was excellent. I, I mean, one of the things I loved was that it didn't actually shy away from like the racial discussions. I thought it might've just been like, oh, maybe it's just a casting thing, but then you know, like, oh no, it's integrated within the story, which made it that much more nuanced, I would say. Right. Absolutely. Thank and, you. uh, you know, kind of piggybacking off of that, you know, you have a lot of things to balance, you know, obviously you have all the different kids and the personalities and the energy they bring, and that's part of the charm. So what was your approach to balancing that with like the, the you know, Zach and Gabrielle's story is to me kind of like a, a through line that anchors everything together. So what was the approach to balancing all of those personalities and keeping it, you know, succinct? I think there were a couple things we really had to help the kids learn the importance of like staying focused because we have yeah. such limited hours with them. Yeah. And also, you know, they tend to just go into like play mode, goof around mode. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, when someone said, be quiet, it would just wind me up more yeah. to want to act out more. But I really found that when I explained to them why they had to be quiet, because it helped their scene partner, it freed up their brain to think about funny things to do. They really got it. 
And it was amazing because they learned from Zach and Gab, who are such great veterans at that. And they really were like, oh, we want to be on a team. You know, we want to get in on the fun and not just be told like, quiet. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah absolutely. Um, and that was great. And there was just one thing I'll say about a challenge of working with kids is that they say, you know, every actor needs a different director and it's your job to be every single different director that they need. Yeah. And there was one child actor who I will not name. He was usually so focused and a great listener. And there was a thing that I thought was simple and he just could not do it. He was unfocused. At points I would even tell him, try saying it like this. And he just could not. And I was like, what's going on? This is not like him. And then I thought of it and I went up and I was like, honey, do you have to use the bathroom? And he said, yes, Miss Gail, I do. And, and he's like, but I know there's no time. And I said, there's always time for you to be a person. Go take care of it. And he came back and he nailed it. And I just thought this might be my proudest moment as a director. I That's saw directed. what my actor needed. He needed to pee. <laughs> You're talking about Zach Braff, aren't you? You're supposed to be a pro. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, this film uh, surprised us. And I mean, it sincerely, it was, it was actually really delightful. And, and I laughed quite a bit throughout as well. So uh, That's so nice. Tell your yeah. friends, tell your audience. Absolutely. Tell the nephews. I will, tell, I, will, I'm most, I will most definitely be doing that thank you gail for your time and uh thank you for delivering on this movie and uh enjoy the rest of the the junket you have today you too guys thank you so much so fun to talk to you it's fun, fun talking to you too thank you take care bye